We've discovered in class that the universe is huge, but how do we know how far away these objects in the night sky really are? How do we measure the distance to a nebula gas cloud? How do we measure the distance to a star? How do we measure the distance of a galaxy? As it turns out, we're going to use the same process that you use for your depth perception. When we view the world from two different positions, we get an apparent motion of an object. This is what's known as parallax. So viewing these two objects, we see that on the left-hand side, the green lines represent viewing an object that's further away. On the right-hand side, this purple, these purple lines represent viewing an object that's closer to us. The angle we see here is wider for the object closer to us, so there's more apparent motion than there is for the green object, which is further away. In order to find the unknown distance to this object, we must measure two other things of this right triangle. The baseline, which is the distance between the eyes, and the parallax angle, the angle we find at the top of this right triangle. Let's look at this parallax simulation. As we view this object from two different positions, seen by these black dots, we will get an error bar. This red line represents our range of measurement. The longer this red line, the bigger the error bar, and the less accurate our measurements will be. Let's see what happens if I move the object further away to our ability to measure accurately the distance to the object. As the object gets moved further away, our red line increases, which means we'll be less accurate at measuring the distance to this object. Now let's see what happens if I increase the baseline to our ability to measure. As we increase the baseline, we notice the red line becomes smaller, so we are more accurate in our measurement to these distant objects by having an increasing baseline. Notice that we get the greatest error in measuring when our parallax angle is really small. In order to decrease this error in measuring, we need to increase our parallax angle, and we can do so by increasing the baseline. And now we get to the fun part. Here's the right triangle. And honor students, yes, we expect you to be able to describe this on a test. Kind of like an essay question. CP students, you can ignore this part. It won't bother you to learn it, but don't worry about saying this on the test. Angle theta is our parallax angle, and the side opposite theta is the baseline. We're going to measure the distance by looking and finding the distance for the hypotenuse. Our equation is hypotenuse equals opposite side over sine theta. Let's first find the distance to the moon. If we measure the parallax angle for the distance to the moon, observing on either side of the Earth, it turns out to be 57 minutes. Let's make sure we understand what 57 minutes of an arc really is. If we take a circle, we can divide that up into 360 degrees. Here is one degree. If I break up this one degree 60 times, each one of those is a minute. So one degree has 60 minutes. And you guessed it, I can take each of those minutes and break them up 60 times. That means every minute has 60 seconds. Each of these is known as an arc second, and they're really, really small angles. Go ahead and use dimensional analysis and calculate how many degrees are in one arc second.
Now let's calculate our distance to the moon using our trig function. In order to do this, the angle we measure, this 57 minutes, must be in degrees. So we're simply converting our 57 minutes into 0.95 degrees. With the radius of the Earth being 6,371 kilometers, we crunch numbers and come up with 38,000 kilometers as our distance to the moon. Simple. To find the distance to our sun, we measure the parallax angle as 8.8 .8 arc seconds. Holy smoke, that's really small. 8.8 .8 arc seconds. Take one degree, divide that up 60 times, you get a minute. Divide that up 60 times, you get an arc second. So our parallax angle just to our sun is only 8.8 .8 arc seconds. Running the calculation then, we come up with 150 million kilometers as the distance to our sun. That is a pretty important number. It's so important that we give this its own value. We call this 150 million kilometers one astronomical unit or one AU. As we try to find a distance to a distant star, not our sun, we run into a real problem. Our parallax angle just to our sun is 8.8 .8 arc seconds. Going to some distant star, this parallax angle is going to be really, really small. So we've got to find some way to increase our baseline. One of the biggest baselines we can get involves our revolution around the sun. If we view a distant star during the spring and then wait six months until the fall and view it again, we'll have a huge baseline a baseline of 1 AU. Let's take a look at Alpha Centauri. With a baseline of 1 AU, our parallax angle is 0.761 arc seconds. Here's what we can do now. When the baseline is 1 AU, we can use a special unit. We can measure the distance, what we call parsecs. And parsecs is equal to 1 over the parallax angle in arc seconds. So a parsec is a unit for measuring great distances. And it's a really beneficial unit for us because now we don't have to use trig. Watch. If I have a baseline of 1 AU and my parallax angle is in arc seconds, I simply use my equation 1 over the arc seconds and get a distance in parsecs. In this case, the distance is 1.31 parsecs. That's great. But how far is a parsec? Scientists have measured the distance to 10,000 nearby stars using this method. And they have calculated that one parsec is equal to 3.26 light years. So our star then is 4.27 light years away. Can you now calculate the distance in kilometers, in astronomical units? That's your chore. Go to work. <laughs>